Hi, today I'm going to teach you how to make an app that measures how tall something is, like that tree. You just point it to the top of whatever it is you want to measure. And there you go, about 14 meters. This kind of application is really important to foresters, who need to know how much wood they're going to get before deciding to cut a tree down. For that they need to know two things. How thick the tree is at the base, no problem here, really. But also how tall the tree is. To find that out, we move a certain distance away and measure the angle to the top. We then use basic geometry to find out this height right here. This method is called triangulation. You could even do this by hand, but we're gonna make the app for it, of course. And triangulation can be used for many other things as well, not just heights. For example, we could figure out how far that island is over there. Or even distances to faraway stars. But those are topics for some other time. Now, let's go inside and I'll teach you how to code this thing. Oh, and before I go, if you want to learn more things like this, check out my location-aware application development courses on YouTube. They're full of things like this, starting with the fundamentals, but also building real applications like sports trackers, location-based games, and even a router that tells you how to go to avoid the wind. <laughs> anyway, they are university lectures, so they have a much slower pace than this kind of video. But they're also full of many tips, tricks, and students ask many questions that I think are very useful for many of you. So if you're just interested about learning, check those out. Now, let's build this app. This app will work in the browser, so we begin by writing basic HTML. I'll give the page a title, and link here a CSS file for the styles, and a JavaScript file for the logic. These are empty for now. In the body, I'll add a div with id height info. It's empty for now, but eventually it will show the height of the object we're pointing the device at. I'll call a JavaScript function called main unload. If we reload the page now, nothing should happen really, except for this error because the main function is not defined. I'll move to the JavaScript file, add it here, and test if it works. And it does. Now, the key to making this app is finding out the device orientation. We do this by adding an event listener to the window. It will listen for the device orientation event, and when this orientation changes, it will trigger a callback function called onOrientationChange. Let's console log here the information associated with the event. And if we test, mm, nothing happens, because I'm on a laptop at the moment, and even if I shake it like this, it's not equipped with an orientation sensor, so it won't trigger anything. This orientation sensor goes also by different names, like an accelerometer or a gyroscope. Because like this gyroscope, it can always tell which way is up, no matter what happens around it. But in real, the hardware is simple than that. With it, your device can know if you move or tilt it along any of these axes. I'll someday make an in-depth video about these things, and when I do, I'll link it in this video description. So look for it if interested. Anyway, back to our code. So, how can we debug on a device with no orientation sensor? I'll show you. We go to the developer tools here, to more tools and sensors. It opens this orientation section together with other things that we won't be needing today. Here we can set a custom orientation for this virtual device on the right by playing around with it by dragging or by changing the values more precisely like this. Now, as we do this, our log here in the console starts to happen. And the event information contains all three values, 
for alpha, beta, and gamma. Today we'll only be interested in the beta value. So let me focus on beta here now. It essentially measures how the phone rotates along this axis. If you keep the phone like this, it measures 90 degrees. If you flip it like this, it goes to 180 degrees. And if it's like this, it means 0 degrees. So the beta angle is 0 if your phone is on the table like this. You can also get negative values if your phone is upside down. Now, we want to measure object heights like this, so the way we measure our angle should say 0 like this and 90 degrees like this, with all the values in between as expected. So all we need to do is subtract 90 degrees from beta. It now works as expected. But I'm going to dismiss here any negative values to avoid confusion. This 0 to 90 degree interval is really what we want to support here. And now we only get positive values when moving the phone like this. To convert this angle into a height, we need to know something else, the distance to the object. In my case, I measured the tree from a distance of 20 meters. Knowing this, the beta angle, and that this is a right triangle, is enough to calculate the height of the tree. Math tells us that the tangent of this angle is equal to the height, which we want to find out, divided by this distance which we already know. Now, in JavaScript, we can find the tangent of any value by calling the tan method. So we can rearrange and get the height of the tree like this. This method is called triangulation. And fun fact, in movies where police is tracking down suspects using satellites, that's not triangulation. That's actually trilateration. They don't use angles. But we do, and that's what triangulation really means. Now, if I print these values in our height info div like this, it actually doesn't work properly. The angle looks okay, but the height is very strange, sometimes even having negative values. That's because the tangent method here expects radians, and not degrees, so we need to convert it like this. And that's it. Now it works as expected. But be careful when measuring really tall objects, because pointing your phone up like this makes values jump around like crazy. This is because the tangent approaches infinity, and the app is also really unstable because of inaccuracies of the sensor and in your holding of the device. But you can measure very tall objects if you go further away which means that we want the user to be able to set this distance here. You can't expect people to always be 20 meters away from the thing they're measuring. So let's add the slider here in HTML. I'll allow values between 1 and 50 meters, but you can add more if you think you're going to measure very, very tall objects. And I'll set the default of 20 as before. I'll also add an info field for the slider using a div like this. Now we can get the value of the slider and set it as the distance here. And I'll also print this information on the screen, because otherwise it's hard to know the exact value of the slider. If we refresh, we see a slider, and if we rotate, we get an error because I misspelled label here. Now if we refresh and rotate the device a bit, the value appears under the slider. Now this value doesn't update when you move the slider, and you should add an on input event here. 
but I won't bother with it because in real the orientation sensor is really sensitive. So the orientation event will be dispatched all the time. So when you move the slider it will update in real time. Now we still need to add one important feature, the camera input from the back camera of the device. With it, we can align the device to the top of the object properly. Otherwise, it's like shooting in the dark. We do that by using the navigator media devices. We get user media with video parameter set to true. We are not interested in audio here. This returns a promise, so we can write here then and then give a callback function that has access to the video signal. We pass this signal to a video element with ID my video, which we need to add in the HTML too. And play. Here, if the user doesn't give permission to use the video, or if some other error happens, like the device doesn't have a camera, we handle this error. Refreshing now shows the video from my webcam. I just have it pointed at my wall. Let me put Mr. Chibisan here. Now, as the phone moves, the values appear as well. But everything looks horrible, so let's style these in CSS. I'll remove the margin of the body and center the elements. I also set overflow to hidden so that the scroll bars go away. Now, for the video, I want it to be aligned in the center of the screen. So, I'll set absolute positioning and move it in the center by setting left and top to 50% and translating backwards by 50%. I put a negative Z index here so the other things appear on top. I do the same thing for the height info, I want it in the center as well. But the difference is that I translate this by 100% upwards so that the bottom of this element is in the middle of the screen. And here I'll add the border as well. Users can now align this border with the object they want to measure. To see how this application would look like on a mobile device, we can press this button here, and we see that it's horrible. Text is unreadable, the slider is very small, and users can move the page like this. Very poor experience. We go back to the HTML and use a viewport meta tag to control the layout. Much better already. But speaking of mobile devices, one more thing we need to do is specify that we want to use the back camera of the device. Otherwise, users will just look at themselves by default. We do that here in the video object passed to get user media by specifying facing mode to environment. I can't test this on my PC, but it works on my phone just fine. And the video also covers the screen perfectly because the camera records in portrait mode by default, but if it doesn't work for you, you'll need to add maximum width and height in CSS. Now, finishing touches. I'll make the phone size a bit larger and set it to Arial. It's better, I think. I'll also set the color to white, which may seem like a bad idea because the text here is invisible, but white looks really good on top of video usually. To make it more readable, I'll add a black shadow here as well, and you can make it stronger by adding it twice if you want. Now, I don't like the way the slider looks. It's just too small and hard to press. I'll quickly create a custom style here. And that's it.